Pearson's product moment correlation coefficient. And this is when we want to examine the relationship, the connection, the correlation between two continuous variables. Remember, thinking about continuous, this is essentially interval ratio variables, when both of our variables are interval or ratio. So here are a couple of examples. I want to look at the relationship between the number of hours that an athlete practices and how fast they can run the 400-yard dash. Let's think about this. Number of hours practice, well, it could be zero hours all the way up to 5,000 hours, 10,000 hours. And if you think about this, the more hours you practice, well, what do you think that's going to happen to someone's time on the 400-yard dash? Do you think that the time's going to go up or down? Well, if you think that the more you're going to practice, the faster you work, so that means the slower the time. Here's another one. The number of hours you study for the final exam and what you actually get as your score on the final exam. Again, both of these variables are interval ratio. They're continuous in nature. It's the number of hours studying for the final exam and the score on your final exam. These are types and examples of when we're going to use Pearson's product moment correlation coefficient, also known as Pearson's correlation coefficient. So the test statistic, just like when we have mean, our test statistic for the mean is denoted as X bar. Sample size denoted as N. Pearson's product moment correlation coefficient test statistic is denoted as lowercase r. And it ranges from negative 1 to a positive 1, where negative 1 indicates a perfect or a strong negative, also known as indirect relationship, also known as inverse relationship. Zero is right smack dab in between negative 1 and positive 1. Zero indicates that there is no relationship there is no correlation, there is no connection between variable x and variable y. And a positive one is going to indicate a perfect or strong positive or direct relationship. Know that in the line of work that we do, social, behavioral, medical research, you will never find a perfect positive or negative or indirect or direct relationship. It just does not happen in nature. So in addition to knowing what constitutes a strong positive or a strong negative or no relationship in terms of these three numbers, a better way that we can interpret Pearson's correlation coefficient is by talking about strength. When we talk about positive or negative or direct or indirect, this is talking about direction of the relationship. Remember, I talked about how correlation coefficient describes the relationship between two variables in terms of two different things, two different characteristics. Direction, is it direct or indirect, positive or negative? And strength. So when we're looking at the strength of these relationships, we want to look at the absolute value of R. So if we have a number that ranges from 0.8 to 1, regardless if it's positive or negative, we interpret that relationship to be very strong. 0.6 to 0.8 is going to indicate a strong relationship. 0.4 to 0.6 indicates a moderate relationship. 0.2 to 0.4 indicates a weak relationship. And point 0 to point 2 indicates a weak to no relationship. So remember, when we're talking about the strength of a relationship, we want to look at the absolute value of R for us to make this interpretation. In order for us to determine the direction, that's when we want to look at the sign. Is it positive or is it negative? That will indicate if we have a direct or indirect relationship. Okay, now don't freak out. Everybody freaks out. I even freak out when I see this. 
But unfortunately, we are going to have to work through this calculation, and you're also going to have to know how to do this for your exams. But let's walk through this so we can understand what's all in here. It's not as bad as it may seem or as it looks, so let's focus just on the numerator first. N, our sample size. Sigma, well, as we saw before, means the sum. So if you see sigma xy, this is going to indicate this is the sum of the products of x and y scores. So we're going to multiply x and y, the individual scores, and then add up all those individual scores. Minus sum of x times sum of y. So we're going to add up all of our x scores, and then we're going to add up all of our y scores and multiply those two sums. That's going to be our numerator. Our denominator consists of the square root of the sample size times the sum of all x scores squared. So we're going to take each of our individual scores for variable x, square those numbers, and then add up all of those squared scores. Then we're going to subtract the sum of x, so just take all of the individual x scores and then square that sum. Make sure you understand the distinction between the first term and the second term here in our denominator. And then multiplying all that times our sample size again, times summation of y squared. So we're going to take all of our y individual scores, square those, and then add up all of those squared scores. Then subtract the summation of y, take all of our individual scores for variable y, add them all up, and then square that number. And this is how we're going to calculate Pearson's product moment correlation coefficient. So let's work through it. Okay, so what you're going to be given for a sample problem is a table that's going to have two different variables. The first column is going to be variable x. It may not always be called variable x. It may actually be called whatever the variable is. And the second column is going to be variable y. And the way we look at this is that each row represents an individual, each case. So for our first row, participant 1 has a score of 2 for variable x and a score of 3 for variable y. Participant 2 has a score of 4 for variable x and a score of 2 for variable y. And so we have 10 individuals in our sample here. What your job is, is to identify that we're doing a Pearson's correlation coefficient calculation and that you're then going to have to then create three different columns. These three columns are going to be simply identified as x squared, y squared, and xy. Notice that each of these three column headings are part of what we're going to need in our equation. So if you think about x squared, we're simply going to go ahead and take our x variable for participant 1 and simply do what that heading says. So square it. 2 squared is going to equal 4. y squared, what well, we see for participant 1, scores 3. Our heading tells us to square it. So 3 squared is equal to 9. And our last column, the product of x and y. So we see participant 1 has a score of 2 for x, a score of 3 for y. 2 times 3 gives us 6. So why don't you go ahead and work through the rest of these 9 individuals and then come up with your column. When you're done, let's see if we got the same answers. Okay, so hopefully you had a chance to actually work through these other nine individuals and calculate x squared, y squared, and xy. Let's see what you got. Does it match up? Pause the video and see if you can verify all of your numbers. Okay, so the last thing is our last row. We need to actually sum up each of these columns. Notice that our equation isn't actually just x, y, x squared, y squared, x, y. 
It's the actual summation of each of these. So we need to then take each of these five columns and add up all of these values. So go ahead, take a moment, and add up the five columns. This will then set us up to actually just plug and chug into our equation. Okay, so let's see what you got. Okay, so now at this point we've done all the dirty work. This is all the hard work. Notice that this is all you have to do when you're showing your work for Pearson's correlation coefficient. You don't have to show me for x squared 2 squared is going to equal to 4, y squared is going to be 3 squared. Just give me the numbers. As long as you put in the correct headings, x squared, y squared, xy, and show me your summation symbol for your last row, as long as you show me these four headings, then you're fine. Just go ahead and plug in all the numbers based upon your calculations. What you then have to do once you fill out this table is then simply plug and chug. Put in all of the appropriate numbers into the correct spot of the equation and then solve. Take a moment and plug and chug through this equation and see if we get the right answer. All right. So hopefully you had a chance to actually plug and chug. Let's see if it all matches up. Go ahead and double check your work. If you confirm this, go ahead and actually work through the calculations and see if you can come up with a final Pearson's correlation coefficient. When you've got your answer, go ahead and replay this video. Otherwise, go ahead and pause this and work through the calculation because you will want to practice working through this to make sure you get the final answer. All right, so hopefully that wasn't too painful. Let's see if you got the right answer. Here's our numerator, our denominator, and our Pearson's correlation coefficient for variables x and y demonstrates that we have an r equal to 0.692. So how do we then interpret this? The relationship between x and y indicated a strong positive relationship or a strong direct relationship. So think back. We want to look at the strength, looking at the absolute value of this number, and looking at the different ranges, and then look at whether or not this is a positive or a negative number. If it's positive, that indicates a direct relationship. If it's negative, it indicates an indirect relationship. 